Hey guys, when I bought the 350Z, the plan was to make videos just to document the progress of the car, but also to educate you to what it costs to run a car here in Japan. So this came just a couple of days ago. This is the tax bill. And in this video, we're gonna cover how often you have to pay tax on a car here in Japan, what the different categories are, and what it's gonna cost me for the 350Z. I also want to do a couple of things to the car today and I've had some issue trying to buy a quality shift boot online here in Japan. So I'm about to head to Up Garage, see if they've got anything decent in stock. With this being a secondhand shop, every time you come it's slightly different and you always see something quite interesting. Here we've got a set of slick tires, 3,000 yen. There's only three, no idea where the fourth one is. You just got loads of different things. This is all the tire and alloy section, but we'll have a look around. When I come here as well, I always like to have a look around the suspension aisle, see what they've got. Here they've got the R34 GTR suspension, 14,000 yen, as you can see, seen better days, but still looks operational. Here we've got the R35 GTR, 16,000, of course this is without tax, 17,500 with tax. And this is Bilstein. I think this is the OEM version. Don't look too bad. Here, we've got Hypermax Pros. This is for the S14 or S15 Sylvia. See the price there. With tax, it's 11,000 yen. Nothing for the Fairly DZ though. There is ones down there for the WRX STI. Again, Bilstein and various others. Now that I've got the stereo fitted, I need to start thinking about upgrading the speakers because the ones in the car at the moment are not that great. But some random things they've got in today. WRX STI bumper. Couple of R35 GTR hoods. This one here is 5,000 yen. This one here is only 3,000. But also they've got some HKS exhausts. This one here is for the Evo 10, 55,000. And then we've got this one here, titanium tips as well. This is for the Honda CHR, 44,000. But they've also got a Supra, the newer version. Pretty cool. And this one is going to cost you 110,000 yen. Another thing I like looking at is the seats. See what they've got, you can see this Recaro here, it doesn't seem to have a price in it, but it's in good condition. This old school Sport J, 36,000. It's in quite good condition. Looks like it could be from uh, Evo. But I like this one, this is really, really nice, good condition. So this is the Recaro SR7. 70,000, 77,000 with tax, but it's in really good condition. I like this seat a lot. The only problem I've got with this is the color. If this was black with the red, then I would be very interested because then it would match the rest of the car. But being the blue trim, it's not going to be suitable for my car. But if it was red, I would really consider buying the seat. It's really cool. So I found a couple of shift boots. We've got this one up here which is just a leather one with a yellow stitching. And then they've got a carbon fiber one, which has also got yellow stitching. I don't want yellow stitching because it's red stitching inside my car and that would look pretty stupid. So the search continues. Fast forward one week, as you've seen, I did not manage to get the shift boot from Up Garage. So I just ordered this one from America. Only took one week to get here, which is good. It's really good quality, nice leather, cool red stitching and also it comes with the pre-drilled holes so that will make it much easier to install so the plan now will be to remove this for probably the 100th time and swap over the boots and it will make this whole area just really really nice big difference from where I started but also when I installed the stereo on the back of the stereo there's a, a cable that has a USB port on it and I never actually ran it through the car so I could use it so I'm planning to take this paneling off again 
and run the cable up through these holes here and that will make it very very useful so that will be the plan for today to remove the boot what I'm gonna have to do is remove the four screws and also I have to remove this plastic piece because this will need to go onto the new shift boot you can see here as well this is held on by a tied up and you wouldn't think it would come from the factory like this but it does this is actually from the factory it's not very tight though because I can just pull it off with my hand so I said that I would explain how often you had to pay tax in Japan what the different categories are and how much I have to pay for the 350Z so we'll cover the first topic now while I unscrew these screws so the first topic was to do with how often you have to pay tax on a car here in Japan and the answer to that question is yearly so we'll pay tax every year but what's a little bit different here than what it is in the UK it doesn't go so when you pay for your tax it's not that it's going to be the next year that you have to pay again certainly not in the first year you buy the car I bought my car in September and my tax is due now which is May and that's because the tax needs to be paid every single May so if you buy a car in January you would pay a full year's tax but you still have to pay again in May so you need to bear that in mind and that's the plastic surround off I'll put that to the side then we should be able just to remove this easy enough now we'll have to look at the different points and see where the new one goes it's already got the holes pre-drilled in so it should make it easy I just need to make sure it lines up properly so I need to remove this plastic piece and then put it on to the new one and what I've seen in the YouTube videos that I've watched before trying to attempt this is attaching it to the new one is very 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 tricky so I'll play around with this, I'll put it on the time lapse and hopefully it's not too difficult That's the plastic piece on. Wasn't too bad to be honest. I just had to trim these parts a little bit and then it just slid right in. So not that difficult of a job. Now we'll try and get it put in place here and see how it looks all fixed up. That's the new boot in place, looking much, much, much better. So now I'll go and remove the center dash and move the USB cable to a place where I can actually use it. This is the USB cable I left tucked down the back there, so I wasn't able to use it. As you can see, I've put it through the hole here and it will sit inside the storage box. Not sure if this is going to be the final location, but it's okay for now. At least I can use it. So I'll put this dash piece back in place and then I'll put the gear shift surround in place. Really need to get a new one of these, this is disgusting. But once that's done, that will be us finished inside the car. That's the shift boot in place, looking really good. So happy how much cleaner this center section looks compared to when I got it. Much, much, much better. But let's get to the second part of taxing a car in Japan. So I'll try and put that in place here. So this is how they work out how much you're going to pay for your tax each year. And there's three sections here. This is the full price here. This is a discounted price. And this is just a discount that you get. 
no idea how you get discount because I just got the full price straight away. So maybe when I go to pay it, I might get a little bit of discount, but I don't know. But you can see here there's 10 different categories. And if I go a little bit closer with the camera, you can see it's all about engine size. There's nothing to do with how much horsepower you have at all. And it starts off below 1000 cc. So if you were to have a K car here in Japan, you would pay 29,500 yen. That's the full price. So that's about what, $300 and maybe 220 pounds. If you go a little bit further down, if you look here, you've got two liter here and two liter here. Well, this one here would be below two liter and this one is two liter and above. So if you have a two liter car, you cannot sneak into the category above. You would go into this one. So for say a two liter Impreza STI, you would pay 45,000 yen. Then you can go to a three liter. So if you look at the Supra, then you would fall into this category and you would pay 58,000 yen. And you can go all the way up to above six liter. So now you're getting into imported cars, probably from America, and you would pay 111,000 yen per year. So that's about $1,100 and probably about just short of 800 pounds. As always, you can see how dirty the car is. I can just never ever keep it clean. A couple of things still to do to the car before we wrap up this video. I'm going to change the window wipers. And also I've got a Nismo cap for the fuel cap. So we're going to fit that as well. We'll just clean it up a little bit and then put the cap over the top. It's not a replacement, it is just a cover. But it still should look a little bit better than the standard one. Although I will only see it when I'm actually filling up the car. And most other people will not see it. But at the end of the day it's all about details. We've got the wipers and we've also got the Nismo fuel cap cover. Always love the Japanese presentation, always high quality, even when you're buying something small. So if you look at the Nismo cap, looks really, really good. I just wish it was an actual replacement and not just a, a cover. You can see in the back, it's just going to be stuck on. Now I've washed this already, I've cleaned it up, and my expectation was going to be that this would just sit on here and it would be quite tight over the old cap. But when you put it on, you can see it, it moves slightly. So I don't know if this was replaced before or not. But I will put it in place, let it settle for a while and see how it goes. Hopefully it will stick there and it will still have the strength. That's the wipers in place. It's a shame that this is just a cover because I think the color combination is quite cool. But of course it's just a plastic cover and it needs to come off. I've gone with the flexi type wipers. I've got quite a lot of bumpy roads around my area, so this should help me keep maximum contact with the window. That's the idea anyway. Remove this second one. Okay, so I did actually inquire about replacing the arms because I've got a little bit of corrosion, not much, but it could do with looking a little bit nicer. And it's quite expensive. Uh, to replace both of these, it's probably around $250. Which is maybe around £200 or something like that. And yeah, it's, it's a little bit expensive. I think I need to fix other things first before I worry about that. I also put on the fuel cap. Looks really good. As I said before, the car really, really needs a good clean. But I like the look of this. And it does keep the strength you can even click it round so that's quite good I'll flip it round so I can see the Nismo logo straight yep there you go so it was a job worth doing it does look quite nice and it will go with my oil cap and also the radiator cap as well they're both Nismo Let's try these wipers and see if it clears the window better than the last ones. You can see I've got a bit of an issue with my water flow at the right side. I think the pipe is burst. That'll be a future job. Let's see if it 
it dries the window. Yeah, it's pretty good. Much better than the last ones. You can see my mileage now. It's almost at 152,000 kilometers, which I think is around maybe 96,000 miles. And for being that age, the car's in pretty good condition. There's no corrosion at all on the body and even underneath the car is quite clean. So that's me finished at the car for today, heading back to the house. So now it's time to tell you how much it costs to tax the 350Z for one year here in Japan. And the answer is 66,500 yen, which is about $660 and around maybe 450 pounds. Quite a lot compared to the UK. I don't know what it costs or even if you do have to tax your car in America, but I think it's quite a lot, but it is what it is. Next month's a big month for the car. We'll finally get the suspension changed and I can finally get rid of that annoying noise in the back of the car. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, make a comment below what you think of the 350Z and until next time, stay safe and see you again soon.